Good morning. You guys, this is the example that you need to follow. Welcome. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's an exciting day today. We are going to be baptizing. Oh, oh, there it is. I was just looking for all my paperwork. It's over there. We're baptizing Mason this morning. And then after service, we're baptizing Josephine. Where's Josephine hiding? She's back there. So we've got a couple of baptisms today. And just kind of fun, that'll be eight for the month that I've done. So it's, a, it's an exciting time. But thanks for joining us today. Oh, another note. I was going to do it right at the baptism. I'm going to do it now while I have all your attention, because later on you might not pay attention to me. Um, with special treat today. Uh, how many of you remember a couple weeks ago, um, I had a sermon and I talked about how the source and the quantity of the water don't matter. It's the water and the word. But we do have kind of a special treat today because part of the water that's in our baptismal font this morning actually came from the Jordan River. So, so that was kind of cool. Scott's dad, Ron, brought it back from the Holy Land to be used for Josephine's baptism. And they said, hey, put it in there and we'll do both of them with it. So I thought that was kind of a neat treat for this morning. So um, other things, uh, you'll see the big thank you out there on the bulletin for those that helped with VBS last week. We've got another one, not this coming week, but the week after. We can use some more help for that. So if you have any time during the week of August, uh, what is it, 29th through the 2nd, I believe it is, yeah. Um, let us know at the church office. Uh, we can use any amount of help. Anything you can do would be greatly appreciated. Um, also, we're starting to get information on our uh, picture directory. We're going to be doing a new one this fall. And we could use a few folks to uh, sign up to help get that thing going. The nice thing about this one is it's a once and done thing. If you sign up, we just, you just get one little project and then you're done. It's not like a big, long commitment. It's like help out and, and you're done. So we like that. So if you can help, uh, get a hold of Lisa or John or June or Lori and uh, let them know there's going to be a Zoom meeting with the picture directory people uh, tomorrow night. Um, so if you want, you can uh, come in here and sit in on that. Um, otherwise, um, like I say, just get a hold of them. And then just an update on LFOJ there. They did hire an administrator, director, so things are working working well there we hope to have the center reopen the first full week in september so uh that's that's good news um let's see so let's see what are we doing here oh prayer list we have herman wartgo andrea gunderson lowell nut harold larson and penny larson that's all i have that's enough isn't it all right anybody else have anything i'll give you an opportunity all right well, as we gather this morning, when you think about it, it is a silly question. Lord, will those who are saved be few? Why do you think you need to know that anyway? Maybe such a person is worried for others or their family or for their children. Or maybe they're looking for a loophole for themselves. Of course, our Lord sets us straight by turning the question back so that we ask, am I going to be saved to answer that question, we almost automatically fall into the temptation to believe that the answer has to do with the sufficiency of our own merits or our own good works. The narrow door and Jesus' requirement to strive to enter seem to suggest some evidence of effort on our part. To the surprise, however, how it is that there is no effort required. One only receives the work, the merit, and the righteousness of Jesus Christ. In holy baptism, you receive that new status of child of God, bearing the righteousness of Christ. The striving and effort are but the daily dying and rising by repentance and faith by the power of your baptism. The strength of, to persevere is nourished by the body and blood of Christ in the Eucharist. Keep entering through the open door. Jesus Christ, our Lord. We begin with our opening hymn, All People That on Earth Do Dwell.
You may be seated. All right. Uh huh. It's time. We're going to be doing the baptism. I'd like you to follow along in your uh, hymnal. I believe uh, 268, maybe? Yeah, that's it. Hey, uh -huh. So, let's see. Mom, Dad, sponsors. Front and center. Yeah. And we'll have the sponsors on this side over here. Mom and Dad right here. Right here. Oh. <laughs> All right. And now, just a reminder, as we go through the service and we follow along, anytime you see the big, bold letter C, that means I'd like you to answer. And uh, if you see the big red R, that's where we're going to answer too, uh, except when we're talking to the sponsors. They're going to do it solo, okay? So everybody's all set. We begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Oh, I forgot. You guys have a part in this, too. Yes. How are you to be named? All right. Let me sneak in here. Mason Alexander Milanowski received the crown of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified let us pray almighty and eternal God according to your strict judgment you condemned the unbelieving world through the flood yet according to your great mercy you preserved believing Noah and his family eight souls in all you drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his hosts in the Red Sea yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Mason Alexander according to your boundless mercy and bless him with true faith by the Holy Spirit that through this saving flood all sin in him which has been inherited from Adam and which he himself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that he be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope, so that with all believers in your promise, he would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. All right. Now, from ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for neighbor. Is it your intention to serve Mason Alexander as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, say yes with the help of God. God enable you both to will and do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. 
But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth, and forevermore. Amen. All right, here's where we all get to help Mason out. Mason, do you renounce the devil? Yes, Yes, I renounce. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, Yes, I renounce. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Yes, I believe. Mason Alexander, do you desire to be baptized? Yes, I do. All right. Let's see how Mason likes this. Oh, a little towel, please. Thank you. All right. Mason Alexander. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What a trooper. All right. (laughs) Candle, sir. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to eternal life. Amen. There you can. Receive this burning light to show that you have received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which shall have no end. Amen. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Mason the new birth in holy baptism and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as he has now become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure, he may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Lord and giver of life. This one's not in there. Look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gifts you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Okay. You can blow that out. There's a little box for it that you can put in. And there's a certificate over there for each of you. If you need to dry them some more. All right. Thank you. Yeah. 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 There we go. Oh, and you know what? I forgot his flower, but we'll get it after. <laughs> the flower. We'll get it after. All right. If you would please rise. We continue with our service with the opening sentences. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The mighty one, Lord, good God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Invited by the grace of God as his baptized children we entreat his mercy, confessing our sins and receiving his forgiveness. O merciful Father, hear our plea for your constant help in the struggle of living in the strength of your baptism into the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We lay our sins on his atoning death. Raise us in the assurance of your forgiveness and your power to create new and contrite heart, that we may serve you in holiness and forever sing your praises, both now and forever. Hear us for the sake of Jesus, our Lord and our eternal King. Amen. Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, strengthen you with his grace in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, you have extended your invitation to forgiveness, life, and salvation to be proclaimed and heard throughout the world. Grant that all people hear and learn to respond to your love in a constant faith empowered by your word and sacraments. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah, the 66th chapter. For I know their works and their thoughts, and the time is coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and shall see my glory, and I will set a sign among them, and from them I will send survivors to the nations, to Tarshish, Pol, and Lud, who draw the bow, to Tubal and Javan, and to the coastlines afar off that have not heard my fame nor seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the nations. And they shall bring all your brothers from all the nations as an offering to the Lord. On horses and in chariots and in litters and on mules and on dromedaries to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord. Just as the Israelites bring their grain offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. And some of them also will take for priests and for Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth that I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your offspring and your name remain. 
from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before me, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading is from the letter to the Hebrews, the 12th chapter. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. You have, and have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, lift up your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it may become defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterward, when he desired to inherit the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. For you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further message be spoken to them for they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of all the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteousness made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for our verse and gospel. Alleluia. People will come from east and west and from north and south and recline in the table, the kingdom of God. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Glory to you. Jesus went on his way through towns and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and do knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us, then he will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you talked in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abram and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourself are cast out. 
and people will come from east and west and from north and south and recline at the table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first and some are first who will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our hymn of the day, Oh, What Their Joy. and mercy to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ, his Son, our Savior. Amen. Every day we enter and exit doors. You've already done it a few times today just to get here. The door of the bathroom, the door of the house, the door of the car, the door of the church. Could be the door to the store, the door to the office. But have you ever come to one of those experiences you came up to the door and it was locked? I had one of those experiences. I, I worked for a company one day and I was going to work. And I went to work and the door was locked. Now, it was often that I got there early, so I had a key. And I put the key in the lock. And guess what? The key no longer worked. The door was closed. I could not get in. I was a little surprised. As I said, I had gotten there early, so I waited for a little while. Finally, the boss showed up, and I got out of the car, and I said, hey, is there anything you want to tell me? He said, yeah, you don't work here anymore. <laughs> oh, okay. I'd give you my keys, but they don't work. The door was closed. So I want you today, as we listen to this sermon, keep in mind that disappointment 
that you may have encountered at one point when the door was locked and you were unable to enter. As we look at this text from Luke chapter 13. Our text begins with someone posing the question to Jesus. Lord, will those who are saved be few? Well, in Jesus' time, that was a very common debate amongst the rabbis. Who and how many were going to be saved? Even today, people debate the question. What is the standard of salvation? What about those who lead a, a good life? Are, are they going to get in? Will they be saved? What if someone never had a chance to, to hear about Jesus? Does he or she get a pass into heaven? Will they be saved? But Jesus brings it from the theoretical to the practical. And rather than asking, will those who are saved be few, he essentially turns it around and he says to us, the question that's going to get posed to you, will the saved be you? There's a shift. There's a shift from the few to you. And that's where I want to focus our conversation. You're here. You're listening, hopefully. And the question is, will you be saved? And so Jesus said to them, strive to enter through the narrow door. For many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. Now, here, with the image of a narrow door, I think he gives an answer to a theoretical question. Yes. Only a few will be saved. Many will attempt to enter and will be turned away. So I want to talk a little more about the narrow door. Now, there's some people out there who say it's possible that, that, that this reference to the narrow door was in reference to a, a small gate, a small door that used to be in the wall of like Jerusalem next to the big gate. When they closed the big gate at night and they locked it, if you wanted to get in, you had to enter through the narrow door. The narrow door could also reference someone's estate, which is often set up very similarly. In this case, we'll think of the estate as the kingdom of God. There is a narrow door. And Jesus says that it'll take some effort to enter. We're going to clarify his word from the Greek. The word for effort in Greek, and I'm going to do my best to pronounce it. My Greek is not fantastic. It's agonizoma. It's where we get our word agony. It suggests that there is a level of striving or struggle in the Christian life. In the first century, the word agon referred to the Greco-Roman games where men fought against each other. Paul uses the same word in 1 Timothy 6.12 to refer to our efforts to fight the good fight of faith. There is an effort involved in following Jesus. Anyone ever read the classic book by John Bunyan, uh, Pilgrim's Progress? It's an old one. It was written in the 1700s. It follows the story of a man named Christian who's tormented by spiritual anguish. A spiritual guide named Evangelist, he visits Christian and urges him to leave the city of destruction and tells him that salvation can only be found in the celestial city known as Mount Zion. Along the way, he's tempted with distractions and shortcuts. However, he perseveres. There's one point in the book where he is, just, he is directed by the gatekeeper named Goodwill to go to the wicked gate, which is the beginning of the straight and narrow king's highway. Later in the book, we see that Goodwill is Jesus himself. I can't help but see parallels. 
to what Jesus is referring here in Luke 13 to our Christian lives. We struggle with the same temptations. The temptation to take the easy way out, to take the shortcuts, to get distracted, to give up, to despair in life. And yet Jesus invites us to persevere, to make every agonizing effort we can to enter through the narrow door. And here's what the gospel says about this. Jesus is the one who has fought off the forces of evil already for us, opening the narrow door to us. In Luke 22, the word anguish, agonia, is used as Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane, just hours before his arrest and agonizing death on the cross. That agony of Jesus enables us to go through that open door. Now here's the reason why effort is needed. Because while the door is open right now, guess what? The door is closing. And if we don't agonize, if we don't make the effort, the door will be closed. Jesus says in verses 25 and 26, Once the master of the house has risen and shut the door, and you begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us. And he will say to you, I don't know where you come from. Those are not words you want to hear from Jesus at the door. And it makes the point abundantly clear. Do not ignore the open door. Don't lollygag around. Don't spend your life getting distracted by pleasures of the world. Press on. Make every effort to enter the narrow door. The good news is Jesus has opened the door. The cross and the open tomb mean this door is open. But what you need to know at the same time is that it's a limited time offer, right? Just like we hear on TV, right? Be the 22nd caller? No. We're familiar with limited time offers. Stores have them on certain items or even just in general, right? They're store hours. You have to be there when the store is open. Not every store is open 24 hours a day. Maybe you got one of those moments when you realize at the last minute that you need something from the store. You get there, the door is locked. You look inside, you still see people in the door. You knock on the door. Can you open up? I just need toilet paper. But you missed it. They're closed. You get that sinking feeling in your stomach. We look at these words of Jesus, these words in Luke 13, and I can tell you that there are going to be some people come the end of the world who are going to be disappointed. And they will plead with Jesus. Open the door to us, and they'll make excuses. We ate and drank in your presence. You taught in our streets. We sat in your pews. We attended your church services, and yet Jesus will say, I don't know you away from me. Rather than open, the door will be closed, and many will be turned away while only a select few will be included in the feasting. So, so let's circle back around to that question. Lord, will those who are saved be few? It's the wrong question. The more important question is, will you be saved? And if so, how can you be saved? Salvation comes through knowing Jesus. Remember the reason Jesus rejects those who knock? He says, I never knew you. And here, 
This is just not know of someone, like you know the name of so-and-so. No, this is the know someone intimately, personally. To have that relationship with the person, Jesus has opened the door to have that relationship with you. He did it through his death on the cross. In John 10, he declares himself to be the door. And if anyone enters by him, Jesus, he will be saved. He's laid down his life for you. To know you, but more importantly, to be known by you. And so today, the door stands open. The invitation remains. Strive to enter through the open door. And while there's breath in your lungs, there's hope for your soul. Don't ignore the open door. Amen. And now with that peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Well, because we already did the Apostles' Creed, I'm going to let you remain seated, and we are going to continue with the prayer of the church. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your holy church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to remain constant in the struggle of faith, empowered by the cross of Christ, filled with hope and confidence. Lord, in your mercy. Save and defend the whole church and strengthen your faithful people through the word and the holy sacraments establishing them in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and to those who hold offices of service in your church, that by their work and example, faith may abound and your kingdom increase to all on the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Preserve our nation in justice and honor, and grant health and favor to all who bear the office of government in our land. Guard and protect all those who served in the armed forces of our country, especially this day we remember Jordan. Give them faithfulness and success in their service and grant that their homecomings be joyful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow, need, sickness, and adversity. Especially, Lord, this day we pray for Herman and Andrea, Lowell and Harold and Penny. Be with those also who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on all whom death draws near. Sustain and bless all who care for those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. We remember with thanksgiving those who have loved and served you in your church on earth, who now rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Just a reminder, there's a uh, basket in the back where you can drop your offering. Um, you can also drop it in the church mailbox. You can mail it to the church. And if you're technologically inclined, you can download the church app and you can actually donate through your iPhone or Android device. And as always, thank you for your stewardship. If you would, please rise as we continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by his own bloody sacrifice on the cross as the pure and holy victim who bore our sins and the sins of the world, he has opened the door to your kingdom for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Receive our thanks for the forgiveness, life, and strength to live given to us through his very body and blood in this holy sacrament of the altar. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given up for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
If you would, please rise as we continue with the post-communion thanksgiving. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, O God, for making us your own children through our baptismal death and resurrection by faith in Christ and for strengthening that faith this day in the very body and blood of our Lord. Help us daily to strive in this faith, to live in love for you and for our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. My friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and to give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, Glory Be to Jesus.